yeah so waiting for you guys so we can start ah do i really need to invite you mm. Okay, let me see. Jimmy, come on. Yeah, we're waiting for you guys. It's um, five minutes past 12. We're already five minutes late. So let me see you say something if you're here already. <clears throat> if you're here already, let me hear it. Let me see you say something. You can type in the comment section. Just holler at me and then yeah, Morrison, good day. I can see you. Yeah, I got your message. I know you've been waiting. Thank you. Wow, Emmanuel. Ah, news machine. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome today for today's live um, discussion. Waiting for more persons to join. Yeah, I can see. Mm -hmm. oh, is that James? Yeah, James is here. Okay, Ole. Ah, uh, Wilfred, I understand you're not feeling fine. Okay, I'll talk to you later. Sorry about that. Hope you're getting better. Please don't be sick. I'll keep praying for you. Yeah, Pascal, I know you'll be here. I'm sure you were even here before I got online. Good afternoon. Welcome to today's live show. Yeah, we're going to be talking some things. I expect you guys to also um, drop your comments and your feelings um, in the comment section. I'll respond to you. I shouldn't be the only one talking. Amakri Victor is present. I can see you live and direct. Welcome to today's live program. Welcome. Good to see you guys. 
Yeah, we're waiting for more people. You can call your friends. You can ask them to join us. Sometimes it's better to um, be here when the program is on so that you can drop your... Uh, Uzoma, Uzoma, you're here. One, you're my greet you. I greet you to my brother. Yeah, you're welcome to today's live program. We're going to be discussing something that is actually trending in, in, the, in the policy right now. Yeah, going to be discussing. Oh my God, what's happening to my camera? Don't worry, very soon I'm going to get to be in the studio. The Citizen Square studio is red, getting ready. Oh, Nkemka is here. Ah, Nkemka Amadi, you call me at the Niger Delta. You go come bring cow. Eh, uh -huh. You go bring cow. Maybe you go open this door self. Make we, as Nepa don't carry light. <clears throat> Make we see road. Ah, Samuel Kenneth, your presence, I can see. Your presence, welcome to today's broadcast. Yeah, it's gonna be fun, I tell you. You know, those who were, who joined us, the last two programs are still, you know, um, calling in and then also giving their this thing. I'm trying to try this. Yeah, somebody gave me this gift yesterday. Mm -hmm. I'm sure the person knows I like sunglasses a lot. So don't mind, I'm still trying good. Oh, this is nice. Hmm. Yeah, so <coughs> good. This is nice. Wow. Uzoma Wanko says, Is it me? It's full of energy or you? Either way, that's good. Thank you so much for your kind words. Mm. Thank you. Yeah, Jimmy is here behind the camera. He's trying to fix the camera very well. We're actually getting set for our own. Um, to be using our own studio, we're going to go more professional because we're going to be giving you quite a whole lot of vibes, you know, on this channel. Yeah. Okay. Don't you think it's too, I'm making myself, yeah, yeah so. looking as if I'm too short. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wow, this is good. I like this. Messages, inbox. Ah, is that Buchi Ebete? Okay, that's good. Is that Buchi? Buchi, you're welcome. Yeah, Randy, you're welcome. All well, DK, you're welcome. Go to the comment section. Let me know um, you're here, you're waiting. Once we hit like 20, we can actually start. Wow, all well says you're looking more beautiful. It can only be God, you know, it can only be God. Nothing has really changed. Just catching my groove. Yeah, thank you. So I'm going to wear my glasses so I can see you guys, your names better. Okay. Ikbendu Afonwa. Wow, I salute you. I salute you, Ikbendu. Yeah, that name sounds like uh, someone from my place, actually, because it's um, one of our names, Ibendu. You're welcome. Of course, it's an Igbo name. You can find it Igbo in the hinterland or Igbo in the diaspora. Either way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you guys, I expect that um, you should be dropping your comments also so that um, I can respond to you while the program is on. We're waiting for more people. Some are coming in, some are going out. But I'm sure that uh, when the program kicks up in the next couple of um, minutes, three minutes, um, this light is too bright. This light is too bright. In the next couple, oh, this is better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe. Okay. Okay, I hope I don't sweat. Okay, because if you're on the generator, it'll be a bit noisy. 
Okay, Chooks Divine, my dog, my dog is here watching. Ah, my darling, Winnie, Morgan, Sin, always on time. This girl, you're just too special. You're just a different, different, different species. Kai, the belly we born you, they enjoy. I not go lie. I love you, Winnie. Thanks for coming in again. Chooks Divine, you're here. Welcome. Yeah, so... We have about 10 people already. Some came in, some go there. Yeah. yeah, if Imani is also here. Yeah, she's here watching. Although she's right here with me. Anywhere I go, she's there. You know. Not to say she be Holy Spirit though. But she be acting. Acting Holy Spirit. I be acting boyfriend according to some people. That's okay. Yeah, so. Um, so. We are going to be discussing something that is actually trending. I had a pl actually planned for uh, something else, but yesterday, yeah, Precious Cross, Oluibo, welcome to the program. Yeah, I actually had something else I wanted us to talk about. Um, but yesterday, um, we all got, um, you know, buzzed up with the news, um, with the news of um, Fanny Kayode's defection from the PDP to the APC. I don't need to repeat it because every one of yours, it's either you're on TV, radio, newspaper, online, on the social media, the news is making serious headlines. You know who Fanny Kayode is? He doesn't need any introduction. I can tell you because... Um, He's been there for some time. He was once minister for aviation, minister for <laughs> information, and then he was he I think he was um, the spokesman of the PDP during the last election general elections. You know, he was the spokesman of the uh, to the uh, Good Luck Jonathan presidential campaign organization and then he's been very much active in the media, particularly in the social media. He has thousands and millions of followers. And uh, he's quite vocal. He's quite vocal. He can also be controversial. Of course, if you're in the news, you will be controversial. There's nobody. If you're not controversial, I tell you, you are making no impact. You know, people must talk about you. People must get to talk about you. And so, um, hey, Giddy, my friend. Giddy on Demo is here. Welcome. Ah, crack commander. That's the one that my own you thanks. That's my writer. Yeah, that my national secretary is here. Kazim is, uh, wow, thank you. Thank you for your kind words. You're welcome. So let's get back to the issue now. Fanny Kayode, did it come to you as a shock? Let me hear your comments. Let me read your comments. Let me see your comments. Did he, his defection come to you as a shock? If his defection came as a shock to you, then that means you still need to go back to school to study what they call pole 101 pole science 101 you need to understand the nigerian politics better for some of us who've been around for about three decades now it's no news that has been the pattern that has been the style at any given point in time people have reasons to move people have reasons to change from the things they said before and then they want to embrace the new even the Bible talks about leaving the old and moving on to the new covenant. So it's not strange. Change, of course, is one thing that you can you can actually tell that it's influenced by certain factors. For now, many think that Fanika Yonde defected because he needs to sustain his lifestyle. Some think he's he's broke. Some things he has. Um, some issues with the EFCC or whatever, but I can tell you it's it's all far from it. It's all far. But before we get into the Fanica or the proper, I want to draw our attention to uh, the defection that took place that same yesterday during the plenary at the House of Reps in Abuja. Honorable Chisom DK representing Thai LMA Oyibo Federal Constituency. That's actually my constituency. For those of you that know my, you know what I mean. Um, he's defected from PDP to APC officially. It was exactly 
one year ago that he made his inroad into the APC. So today, one year after, I mean yesterday, he decided to make it public. It's official now. And that makes it two members of the House of Reps who are now officially APC members. The first one was Honorable Ephraim Muzi. So even though the APC didn't participate in the 2019 elections, they can now smile that at least they are represented at the National Assembly. These things keep happening. The other, last week, we also got the news of the defection of Senator Stella Odua, who happens to be one of the pillars of the Jonathan administration. She was one of the most powerful women in Nigeria at some point. And whether you like it or not, she shaped, uh, helped to shape the things that happened during that administration. And so Stella, who's been, um, I think it was presenting Obaru, so also for um, um, the, 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 okay, Anambra is a senatorial district. Let me not be too, um, let me not make mistake, but he's, she's a senator under the PDP. So today she's now been baptized into the APC. The gale of defections from one party to the other has been on. We've also seen in some states, people moving from the ruling APC to the PDP. And then this one at the national, we've seen governors move uh, from PDP to the APC. We all know that, I don't need to talk about it, yeah. Yeah, so somebody's saying that some of them are moving because they lack character and place stomach politics. That's actually from Pre Precious Olibo. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. Is there really any morality in, in politics, especially in the Nigerian context? Is there really any... Ah, Michael Odegu, Onyedikachi, Nation newspaper is represented. Thank you for joining us. I'm asking, put down your comments. I will read it out. Is there any morality in Nigerian politics? Nigerian politics is shaped by what we call interest. It has nothing to do with morality. It has nothing to do with um, people standing ideologies. Let me put it that way. Because if it, were, if it had to do with ideologies or morality, you would see the kind of movements back and forth. If it were in a situation where in your party you are being marginalized, you are being caged, you are being uh, stopped and hexed, that's enough reason for you to move. I can understand all that. In the case of Chisom DK of um, PDP, who moved into the AP, reverse APC, he says that one of his reasons for moving was that the governor has refused to fix the Oyibo Afam Road, that stretch of road, if you know it. And it has made life very unbearable for his constituents. And that even when the federal government awarded the contract through the Transcorp arrangement, the governor has refused to let the contractors, you know, um, go to site for whatever reasons. So what it means is that we are having a modern day dictatorship. We are having some kind of rivalry between the river state governor and the agents, agencies of the federal government. So because of that, he moved. So are you going to blame the, um, the, 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 the honorable member for defecting? Does that have to do with stomach infrastructure? At least he's getting his pay, his allowances at the House of Reps. He's not hungry. So I want to disagree with you that uh, it's all about those who don't have character. And let me tell you, character you mean is also subject. It, de it depends on what you also mean by character. Yeah, because we've seen quite some people who have been consistent and persistent following particular politicians and particular political ideologies and they've got nothing, you know, um, to, to show for it. Just yesterday, my friend Joe Ibokwe Abalanze, Prince Joe Ibokwe Abalanze of Newi, cried out, even though I understand that post has been pulled down, that in spite of all he's done to defend the APC, he has never been given a red carpet reception in Abuja. Nobody has invited him to, even for a handshake, even for a meeting with the, a party with the president. So you can imagine the frustration some persons have to face 
because they constantly delay. But I have a word for him and for all of us. If you're a Christian, I don't know about the Quran. Maybe I'll search for a, a similar story there. But if you're a Christian, you know the story of the prodigal son. The first son, the father said, what I have is yours. You live with me till eternity. When I die, you will inherit everything. But this your brother was lost, but he's now found. I hate to, to use the word, your prodigal brother, because many people have defined prodigal. They have tagged people prodigal sons or betrayers just because they moved. But it's allowed. When somebody suddenly realizes his errors and his mistakes, he can move. He can move. But why is that of Fanny Kayode raising so much dust? People are saying, you don't need to condemn him. You don't need to stop him. There's nothing he has done. They've even given instances of people like Erotimi Amechi and the rest of them who defected, Godswi Lakbabio, and the rest of them. But they are failing to understand that the circumstances now and then are not the same. The reasons for the defection of these politicians and the reason for the now may not totally be the same. Fanny Kayode has been a contentious one. He's been very vocal and he's been hitting this government left, right, and center at any given point in time. He's been partnering with uh, Mazen Namdekano, the um, leader of the independent uh, peoples of Biafra, IPOP. He has been at the clamor for secession. He's been supporting anything that is anti-Buari and anti-APC. He said APC is there to fulanize and Islamize the nation. He said there's an agenda by Buhari to do so. At any given point in time, he lashes out at the president to the point that when his friend Nam Dekanu said that Buhari was dead, that what we have is Jibri, he supported him. And very many of their followers, don't forget that he occupies a very uh, large space in the media. And many of their followers believed. But yesterday, he was at Asorok. <laughs> the caretaker chairman of APC, Governor Maebuni of Yobe State, took him to the president. He was received by the president, not even at his word, not even in his state. That's an issue I'm going to talk about in the course of the program. And the same Buhari he said was a ghost Buhari suddenly has become a living Buhari. So I expect that in the next few days and weeks that Fanny Kayode will join some of us who insisted that Buhari wasn't dead to tell the story the way it is, to tell the people, just like, uh, what's his name? The, uh, uh, Thomas, one of the disciples of Christ. He had to touch the body, the max of Jesus to know that, to confirm that it was Jesus. At least Fanny Kayode has seen he has touched and he has felt so he can actually tell if it is actually Buhari or Jibril. So that's why we have to be very careful. Sometimes the people we follow, we don't need to follow blindly. We need to ask fundamental questions. Even our followership, our loyalty does not mean we should be stupid. It does not mean we should be dumb. It does not mean we should um, um, be indoctrinated to take in anything, just anything. Because the men that are leading us will tomorrow change and they'll be received and accorded that reception. While you that has been going to town to tell the tale of this and that, nobody will recognize you. And what do you do? You want to make it um, a turnaround, 180 degrees, to say, well, what I said in the past, just like Fanika Yode is saying, what I said in the past about Buhari is not true. I've seen that Buhari means well. I've seen the most humane president ever. But these are not even the reasons why I'm making this video, this live video. Very many people are so myopic, so gullible, they don't understand the politics of this country. Is it surprising that Fanny Kayode joined the APC less than 24 hours after the media aide to President Gulag Jonathan debunked the news of his purported defection to APC. You can add two plus two. 
The question is, do you think that Fanny Kayo did to loyalty to Jonathan? He can just wish it away like that. Add it. You can see where we're coming from. It's obvious that somebody is actually a forerunner. It's obvious that somebody is going to be doing the job, the job of the John Baptist. You, of course, you know. No matter what any politician tells you, I'm not defecting. Is a cause to is it, let me stay, let me die. If I join APC, if I join PDP, all those babash. They are just deceiving us. That's their usual language. That's their usual sing song. They don't really care whatever names you call them. They've gotten to the point where what the public says does not really matter. They don't give a hoot. Why? Because at the top, the leaders need them. Whether it's for their nuisance value. Fanny Kerede has so much guts. Don't be surprised. He's going to, he's positioning already, waiting for those who will take on him. He's waiting for the National Policy Secretary of PDP, Kola, to make any statement. He's also probably being positioned for those who may want to attack Good Luck Jonathan and his perceived dis defection. It may be he's in preparation for all that, so he will take them on. Don't forget he was once with them. He was the part and parcel of the inner caucus of the PDP. There's nothing he doesn't know about any one of those leaders. So, as far as I'm concerned, he's on his way to become the modern-day John the Baptist. I want to be proved wrong that the agenda to make Jonathan the presidential candidate of the APC is not true. Well, like I said in my last program, it is his constitutional right to contest. It is his constitutional right to join the APC. The issue of morality is the sec is another question. The issue of whether, I mean, he, he's a dog that goes back to his vomit, it's another question. Some are saying, what did he forget in Asurok? But they have not asked, what didn't he forget? Just like my former boss, Lucky Binedion, his father once said, <laughs> when Lucky, they said he didn't do well in his first tenure. So during the campaigns, the Esama, of Bini Kingdom said, if person fail exam, you not go repeat. You not go repeat. So, if we said that Good Lord Jonathan didn't do well, and that's why we pushed him out, there's nothing wrong with him coming to repeat, maybe to at least impress his people, particularly the Niger Delta, the South East South South, where he didn't do anything. Maybe that's his reason. Maybe it's selfish. But the fact remains that he's going to be running for or sitting there if he wins. If he's giving the ticket first and if he wins, he's going to be there for just four years. And that means the power will shift back to the north. So the south will be denied their opportunity to run for eight years. And some people are already justifying that, saying that when, unfortunately, uh, President Umaru Yeradua died, Jonathan was not completed his tenure, and would have allowed a northern candidate to emerge in 2011, but that he went ahead to run the election. And at the end of the day, at the end of the day, the North lost out, I think, six years before um, Buhari now um, came. So that's the, that's the issue. But what we are now looking at is, is it right for people who at one point or, or the other discredited the party to be given such red carpet treatment. I have a word for you and I. For me, I want to see things differently. I like to see an opportunity in every opposition, every mess. There must be a message in every mess. Fanny Kayode is no small fry. He's not one that you will wish away. He has built a platform, a political platform for himself. Some think he's a nuisance. But I tell you, even the politician wants somebody for their nuisance value. The person rather be, stays with them than to be on the other side to cause problem. So he rather stays with them. 
Somebody said, FFK we add the functions of John the Baptist and nothing more. That's like supporting what I'm saying. Thank you, Gideon Dimo. Yeah, for that comment there. So the question is, what are you doing to raise your level so that when things like this happen, you'll be celebrated? Even when people are breaking their neck, crying, the leaders are celebrating you because there's, you have relevance, you have content, you have something that you can use to negotiate your way back. You must have a bargaining power. What's your bargaining power? Some of us, like Joy Ibuku, uh, Ibuku uh, cried out, have been in this business. We have shown loyalty, we have shown humility, we have shown commitment. But we are yet to be taken to the national level. That's what Joy Ibuku is talking about. But in his case, anyway, like I said, he is close to the national leader of APCB, Asiwaju. So if Asiwaju is not taking him to Asorok, he can make do with uh, the body loan. That's another seat of power. Anyway, but he has a point there, no matter how we want to dismiss it. You know, so now, you between you and I, or between you and Fanny Kayode, who has more content? Who has more value? You are saying he's of no this, he's inconsequential, he has no character, he has no content. But in the business of politics, as far as Nigeria is concerned, those are the people who are highly valued. Go and check the list. He may, his reason for defection may not be uh, germane, may not be cogent. But the fact remains that somebody needs him. And somebody needs him to get this job done. Of course, you and I know that even as Minister for Information, uh, Fadi Kayode will do better. Yeah, I'm trying to read what somebody is saying here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we'll look at that later on. Uh, somebody needs somebody to get the job done. And they spotted him out. How have you been spotted out, even in that organization you belong to? What are you doing to raise the stakes? So that when the chips are down, you'll be the most sought after. Whether you like it or not, Fanny Kayode has built content around himself. Whether you call it nuisance, his nuisance has value. And then you, of course, who is preaching morality, <laughs> what is your content? I don't think that politics is pulpit. I've always said that. Like somebody made a post. I think it was as, um, Senibor Chris Feinborn the spokesman of um, the Oracle of Rivers APC. He said something, that the church is open, opens its doors to both the sinners and the saints. So, why would politics also exclude even the sinners? And in any case, who is even a saint in this business of politics? Is another issue for another day. So, for me, Fanny Kayode is doing what he knows how best to do. And I'm sure in the next couple of days and weeks, we are going to be seeing quite a lot. Those who do, he will be cutting to size very many people. Don't forget he's Mr. Short Fuse. <laughs> he has a quick temper. And so he doesn't waste time. And he's very good with his choice of words. Take it from me. So if an Ekayode is brought into the APC to help to do what the likes of lie. Uh, Muhammad have failed to do that one. I don't even want to talk about that one. Self APC, no get media as far as I'm concerned. Maybe Buhari gets spokesman, but who is actually selling the party, the government? That's the job of the Minister for Information. And the reason why is that Sib Buhari has done nothing, even in areas where he has recorded successes, is because nobody is telling the story the way it should be. Everybody is struggling to grab in the party. Nobody is building, and that's why it was as if, if um, the party was almost losing it. Well, since um, the My Buni group came, they have been trying to rescue the party in their own understanding of bringing in people. But I know that most of those negotiations are not for free. Yeah, somebody said what? Uh, said it all as it is in Nigeria today. The likes of him remain relevant. Of course, they do remain relevant. So, 
I mean, it's for you to also know how to remain relevant wherever you are so that you don't cry out tomorrow. Like I was saying, what is Lai Muhammad doing? That one, I don't even understand whether that ministry they exist. Because as far as I'm concerned, Buhari is, is, is giving a low, pa, a low mark, below average, because people have failed to get their job done. Don't be surprised if you see some changes in the, in the government, in the Federal Executive Council in the next couple of weeks and the new blood will be, you know, injected. But that's about politics. And then again, I want to look at even the president himself, who we call Mr. Integrity. Yeah, he may not be corrupt like most Niger uh, Nigerian politicians uh, um, are said to be. But again, I'm beginning to wonder, his romance with very many of these persons, is that really the Buhari that we used to know? Ordinarily, he detests certain kinds of um, character. Um, you know, he, he's not the type that will want to align or associate with people that he thinks that they have a comma. But I think the man is now beginning to understand Nigerian politics. You don't need to be a saint. Even David, King David at some point, fought alongside the people that were in his um, army. We are all manner of people, crazy people, debtors, people that were um, rejects in the society, people that had no background, people that had no pedigree, people that had no name, people who were owing all manner, and all kinds of people. They were the ones who fought with David. David was anointed already, yet he had such characters around him. So maybe that's the, uh, Buhari is beginning to understand the dynamics of Nigerian political power play. That, of course, the more the merrier. And I'm also beginning to get information. I think my friend uh, Rachel, uh, Rachel made a post concerning that. That don't be surprised if you see Saraki and Dino Melaye <laughs> in the coming months. But one area that I, I don't know what's going to happen. I think there's going to be some kind of explosion or implosion in the party. Let me put it that way. Is that these guys who are coming must have been given some concessions. Nobody just defects like that. No big fish leaves the bigger sea to go to the stream. It doesn't work like that. There must be something attracting him. And from what you can see, there are very many people, big fishes, who are coming into the APC now. So what becomes the fate of those who were there before now? Are you looking at it that they could be sacrificed? Are you looking at, are you not seeing that a new power block has hijacked the APC. Are you not seeing it so? I mean, that's the way I see it. If you feel otherwise, put it in the comment section. We'll look at it later on. You know, I think that some persons are, are doing what they know how best to do and repositioning for the 2023. There are going to be alignments and realignments. Don't forget, there's an alternative, the PDP, but unfortunately, the PDP is even sinking, um, is nose diving into the abyss because of their leadership um, fight. So if at the end of the day, all the movers and shakers of PDP empty into the APC, what do you think will happen? Your guess is as good as mine. So it might even be too early for us to say, this is who is going to be, who is going to run, who is going to fly, because the Buhari I know, may not really be bothered about endorsing any particular person. But I know that there's really going to be a serious fight. Right now, the governors are on one side, hoping to bring one of their own as the president and probably running mate. While the ministers are here are, and um, the lawmakers are on one side. So the battle ground is shifting and the, whole, the clouds are gathering. Don't be surprised if in the next couple of months you begin to see some names pop up as potential presidential uh, flag bearers for the APC. That's why you are seeing the kind of movement you are seeing today. Even though Jonathan has said through his media aid, there is no such thing. The National Secretary of APC said there won't be automatic tickets even if Jonathan comes, but there will be waivers does that not tell you is that not the language of politicians that we have been used to so it's enough for you to know what is coming well i just want i don't want to take too much of your time i've taken your time already out of your busy schedules for today 
but you can go online and maybe i'll send you the link on my on my wall you will see the article i made i said fanny coyote the forerunner the forerunner whether well, i hope you understand what that clearly means he's not just coming to just be there in apc and just to make noise he's coming because there's an assignment to be done to be executed and so let's keep our eyes and our ears open if you feel you have anything contrary or anything to support what we just discussed today drop in the comment section or come to my inbox and uh, drop it and we'll look at it and then process it in um, tomorrow when we meet again but i think that tomorrow we may be taking time to look at some other issues that very many of us seem not to know uh, what is actually going on behind the scene we are going to begin to look at the reason why up till now um, the forensic audit of the NDDC, um, the report has not been made public, and uh, we have not been we've not been able to get the names of those who were said to have been part of this list. It's going to be a, a big one. It's going to be a no holds barred. The information I'm the media FBI, so I have access to quite a lot of information. You know, even though sometimes I try to play them down because you know the um, the hostile environment we are living in. Yeah, but I'm going to be discussing that and I'm going to be exposing some things and then and also letting you know the expectations, you know, from the people concerning that um, forensic audit report. So for now, I want to leave you so that you can go get um, about your business. Thank God it's Friday. We are going to at least have some rest from now to Sunday and then probably come back again to continue doing what we know how best to do. So I just want to thank you for joining and wishing you to have a good day and a great day ahead. Thank God it's Friday. Bye. Love you.